I'm excited to say that we have now published the proposed framework for research case definitions of lipedema in Lymphatic Research and Biology, Volume 22, Number 2. There's a link here in the description of our open access online version, so we hope that you'll read the paper for yourself, whether you're a researcher, clinician, patient, or someone who is generally curious about lipedema. I'm Leslie Keith, board president and director of research for the Lipedema Project, along with my colleague and senior author, Dr. Stanley Roxon. Uh, thank you, Leslie. I'm Dr. Stan Roxon. I am the Alan and Tina Neal Professor of Lymphatic Research and Medicine at Stanford University School of Medicine, where I run the Center for Lymphatic and Venous Disorders and serve as the Chief of Consultative Cardiology. I'm also proud to say that I am the co-founder of the Lymphatic Education and Research Network and continue to serve as the chair of the Scientific and Medical Advisory Committee. Today, we want to cover a few highlights from our paper. We feel that this work has potentially created a starting point to modernize the field of lipedema research, as well as to create a platform for the diagnostic process in millions of women with the disease. I want to thank all of our collaborators uh, who represent a broad array of skills that cross the lipedema frontier, including research and clinical practice in a variety of disciplines, and in some cases, a very specific focus on lipedema as a specialty area. These include uh, Les Lynn, who's on the call today, Dr. Catherine Sayo, uh, who is the founder and the director of the Lipedema Project, uh, Monica Wahi, Siobhan Huggins, Matthew Carmody, Gabriela Ferber, Isabel Forner Cordero, Sandro Michelini, Stefan Raprich, and myself. Before starting, we should clarify, what is a case definition? A case definition describes the necessary components to define a disease as such for research purposes. Essentially, a case definition should answer the question, how do we know an individual is suitable for participation in a study on lipedema, and how do we know when someone isn't? In other words, how do we decide they are conf we are confident that someone has lipedema and should be studied as someone with the disease? We'll go through our own proposed framework later in this video, but first, Let's discuss why these questions are so crucial when researching a disease like lipedema. First, many diseases and disorders can have overlapping symptoms despite offering underlying mechanisms. So a case definition helps to ensure that the subjects of the study have the disease of interest. If we are trying to improve our understanding of lipedema, then we have to be as sure as possible that we are studying individuals who actually have lip lipedema, not something else that looks like lipedema or simply has a few similar symptoms. Case definitions also help to ensure that any individuals in control groups do not have the disease. For example, individuals in a control group should not meet the case definition of lipedema. If they do, it may be that they actually do have lipedema and are just undiagnosed and should be excluded from the control group. These two components help provide two distinct groups for study. We can feel reasonably confident that those in the lipedema group do have lipedema and those in the control group do not. This is important for asking questions like, how does lipedema differ from constitutional obesity or from the absence of disease? Such questions are crucial to understanding the root causes of lipedema as a disease. Another bonus of a case definition is that if researchers collect consistent data that is aligned with a standard case definition, then over time, the lipedema research community can verify that individual studies are indeed providing insights into the same disease, something crucial for performing a so-called meta-analysis where information is, is integrated from multiple independent studies to provide an aggregate analysis. Why is a case definition important for diagnosis and treatment? Although intended for research purposes, our proposed framework can have another very important application to the lipedema community. Because lipedema is explained very thoroughly in the paper, these descriptions and ways to evaluate lipedema may be used by skilled clinicians to recognize and potentially diagnose lipedema or refer to a specialist for diagnosis where appropriate. Although research case definitions are typically more strict than is usually necessary for a diagnosis, we hope that the information from our paper will be a helpful starting point for curious clinicians who would like to know some entry-level information about how lipedema may present. What is the framework? Agreed upon characteristics and additional evidence. We decided to separate our framework into two categories for signs and symptoms. One is so-called agreed upon characteristics shown here. These are characteristics that the lipedema research community accepts as key features of lipedema. In other words, features that identify lipedema in an individual with some certainty when present in a cluster. 
You can see the other features in the table here. Two are worth highlighting. Some features may be tricky to evaluate in some individuals. Pain, for example, may lessen with adequate care, and response to diet may not be known in individuals who haven't attempted weight loss. Recommendations for evaluating these are included in our paper. The second category is additional evidence, seen here. There were a few reasons for the inclusion of this category. Lipedema can vary substantially by individual, and in some, typical symptoms may not be present due to comorbidities or certain management interventions. There are also some signs and symptoms that require further research to verify that there is validity to their inclusion within the case definition of lipedema and how to reliably evaluate them, if so. As an example of this category is wrist or ankle cuffing. While this is frequently reported in cases of lipedema, it may not be present in every individual due to the variation in the location of the tissue involvement within that individual. Likewise, because the familial or genetic component of lipedema has not been identified, a lack of apparent family history would not rule out lipedema either. However, the presence of a family history may be suggestive if other signs are present. What is the practical application of the case definition? What cluster of features tells us the patient has lipedema? Looking closely at table four, we must cluster agreed upon characteristics and when necessary, additional evidence when we make the diagnosis of lipedema. Looking first at the agreed upon characteristics in table four, we require the diagnosis of lipedema must have female sex and have pain and or heightened sensitivity, either current or historic. If we have all three of the remaining agreed upon characteristics, disproportionate distribution of adipose tissue to limbs, skin and tissue changes, and unresponsive to diet, they meet the criteria for lipedema. Next, we look at combinations of agreed upon characteristics and additional evidence to build other combinations that lead to a lipedema diagnosis. Remembering that a patient must be female and have pain or heightened sensitivity, and in addition, have two of the remaining agreed upon characteristics, they will need two additional evidence characteristics to diagnose lipedema. A patient who is female and has pain or heightened sensitivity, but only has one of the remaining agreed upon characteristics will need four additional evidence characteristics to ascertain the diagnosis of lipedema. We hope that this brief introduction to our proposed framework has sparked your curiosity and has given you a good idea of what you'll find in the paper. We do want to emphasize that we consider this framework to be a living document. We wrote it with the knowledge that there is still much to learn about lipedema and that it may have to be revised in the future as we better understand this disease. We look forward to these revisions as the accrual of knowledge will create a stronger case definition and support even more powerful research. As such, we highly encourage everyone to read the paper, discuss it, provide feedback, and point out where it might be strengthened in the future, or even how certain criteria or evaluation methods could be put to the test. This proposed framework was written as a global collaborative effort. Our hope is that this will continue to be the case with your help. An effective case definition is crucial to generating even stronger lipedema research to help amalgamate data from teams all over the world as they try to understand and help those with lipedema. This work is ultimately necessary to provide the answers clinicians and patients so desperately seek. Thank you for watching and please reach out to us at Lipedema Project. Case hyphen definition at lipedemaproject.org if you have any questions, comments, or thoughts you would like to share on this framework.